Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and today I want to chat with you guys a little bit about winning them their hypertrophies. Alright, let's talk about gains, guys. You guys know that I love the conventional deadlift. I think it is the greatest exercise and the greatest test of strength of all time. Says me, that's my opinion. If you disagree, I don't care. I didn't ask you shit. I don't care. Not interested in your opinion. That is my opinion. Take it or leave it. Okay. Greatest exercise of all time. It kind of sucks for hypertrophy. Now, when I bring that up, people say, what about novices? Why do you have novices do it? Because novices need to learn how to strain and lift something semi-heavy. We can do other movements to handle the rest of their training volume. That's what it comes down to. And they're not as worried about things like stimulus to fatigue. Okay, they're just not. We don't care. Novices aren't strong enough to overtrain. All right? If you're a grown man who can barely deadlift 200 pounds, you are not strong enough to overtrain. Just not a concern. Unless you do endless amounts of volume. You're not going to do it with actual heavy work or work density. It's just not going to happen. Like, we don't care. We don't care about your axial loading. However, as we start to get more advanced, we do care about, hey, how much weight am I loading on my spine relative to the amount of stimulus I get? Now, what's the problem with the deadlift? It's a partial for every single joint. It's a serious partial. Now, you guys are watching me up here do the snatch grip deadlifts above. That's not quite the same, is it? Not the same at all have to use a lot less weight. I mean, I've got like 445 on the bar. I deadlift over 600 pounds. But on the snatch grip, that's hard for sets of five. That's challenging for me. Now I'm trying to get stronger at it. I want to get to 500 for sets of five. But even then, 500 pounds, not that tough for me in terms of just weight on my body. But we have to do a lot less weight in general relative to our strength. Deeper joint angles involved. Look at the joint angle differences there. Look how much more we have to hip hinge. Get a lot more hip hinging. More knee bend. Now, am I saying it's as good as a squat for quads? No. No. But even a partial squat, a half squat, still builds some quads. All right, or maybe a half squat, maybe a quarter squat. Who knows? I guess if I got deeper, it would be better. I'll probably work on that. But the point is, much deeper joint angles, less axial loading. Okay, What else does it do? Works more upper back. All the musculature at the upper back just gets a deeper stretch on it. You have to hold it tighter. It's having to handle more workload because of that arm position. Um, a lot of that carries over to the deficit deadlift, right? We have to use less weight and we increase the joint angles slightly. Now the deficit doesn't take it as extreme as a snatch grip does unless you go to a very serious deficit. Right? Unless you go to a very serious deficit. Which we can. We could. But we're dealing with deeper angles and forced to use less weight in both cases. Now we could argue the snatch grip has some advantages and that the deficit has some advantages. They're different movements. Right? I tend to do deficit work personally for max work and speed work. Now I believe that speed deadlifts are great for hypertrophy. My rep work itself though, like this, doing fives, or we might do sixes, or maybe even eights. Snatch grip is better. Right, it's better. Forced to use a lighter weight, gets a little more other muscles involved. Gets us really good at pulling from the floor too. So if we get carryover. We get a lot of carryover to our actual performance. But it's a hypertrophy exercise, you know, relative to the conventional deadlift. What else do we have? Good mornings. Got good mornings. I don't even know if I loaded snatch grip high pulls into this. I probably forgot to put them into the file when I was doing the voiceover. We'll get to that in a minute too. Good mornings. Extremely good stimulus to fatigue ratio. 
Now, I'm going very heavy here, so people will note you can only get certain back angles involved, and it has to do with the way the levers and moment arms work. When you start exceeding your body weight, which I'm doing, I have 275 on the bar there. I don't weigh anywhere near that. Not even within 50 pounds of that. So, more than my body weight. But it teaches you to push the hips back when you go really heavy, right? We get a lot of squat carry over to that, don't we? Back a good morning will improve your squat. It will improve a lot of problems with your squat mechanics. Yes, I know there are people who disagree. I don't care. I don't care. I'm not interested. I've seen their, their counter arguments. doesn't pan out in the real world. Look at the stimulus to fatigue. Look how much less weight you're forced to use on this than any other hip hinge. Now people will be like, Jason, you're doing 275. Yeah, but do you understand how much weight I can do on other movements? 275 on a Romanian deadlift wouldn't even be challenging. That's another hip hinge. So look at the biomechanics involved. Because of the moment arm, forces us to use a much lighter weight. We get a stretch reflex in the hamstrings, right? We actually get a stretch overload in the hamstrings with a lot of eccentric control there. Phenomenal hamstring exercise, phenomenal erector exercise. A lot of the stuff you would try to be building with the deadlift, we can do off the good morning. In fact, I would say this is your premier exercise. If you want to hypertrophy your posterior chain and do so in a way that lets you, again, maximize hypertrophy, it will improve some of your other movements, improve things like mobility, and it does. It, makes, it improves your mobility dramatically. Good morning. This is your go-to. This is a fundamental hypertrophy exercise. Now, obviously, we go deeper and with less weight for people who are more novice. Right? We work on getting deeper. Like I said, at a certain point, you're just simply not going to be able to balance the weight. But still, the range of motion here involves getting a stretch overload, stretch reflex on the hamstrings. This is tremendously easier to recover from than the deadlift. Three sets of 10 pretty much limit sets on this will tax you less than one all-out set of deadlifts. Way more muscle involvement. Okay. We got stuff like the snatch grip high pulls. Upper back. Hip involvement. Helps develop more power. It is a speed strength exercise. And it's a low skill speed strength exercise. It will build the whole upper back, the entire shoulder girdle. More importantly, it teaches you to do so while having explosive hip extension. All right. So if we start talking about add-ons to add to our training programming, when we need to get thicker, when we need to get more powerful, we need to put muscle on the right spots, deficit deadlifts, All right. very easy to add in. Better than a deadlift for any sort of rep work. Definitely better for speed work. Snatch grip deadlifts. Again, better upper back hypertrophy. Deeper range of motion. Slightly easier to recover from. Good mornings. Probably, again, the best hip hinge for overall hypertrophy. One of the best hip hinges for helping you with certain problems with your squat mechanics. Direct movement pattern carry over to the deadlift while still putting tons of muscle on you. Snatch grip high pulls. Explosive exercise. Helps with your speed strength. Will stack your shoulders. Again, if you have a problem with your upper back and shoulder girdle, what do we mean by that? Rear delts, side delts, traps. Snatch grip high pulls will blow that area up but it does so while using hip extension and power. What does that mean? It means it improves athleticism while being a phenomenal hypertrophy exercise. Start combining these movements together. Right? We build all the muscles of the deadlift. All the muscles of the deadlift. But we do so without the recovery issues of the deadlift. Right? These are better hypertrophy movements. Right? It's a matter of using the right tool for the job. 
Alright guys, so that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.